welcome to our journey through 70 years of weather and climate from one source, in service of the people. This is what the meteorological landscape looks like in Germany in the early 1950s. In the German Democratic Republic, the Meteorologische Dienst, MD, starts its work on the 1st of January 1950. The Deutsche Wetterdienst, DWD, in the Federal Republic of Germany is established by law as of the 11th of November 1952 as a federal authority under the Ministry of Transport. The DWD combines in it the meteorological services of the three western occupation zones. Shortly afterwards, the Federal Republic of Germany joins the World Meteorological Organization, WMO. The German Democratic Republic is admitted to the specialized agency of the United Nations only later on, in 1973, after both German states had become members of the UN. The meteorological services, which the two institutions are providing, safeguard and support all areas of life. For instance, aviation and maritime shipping, agriculture and forestry, as well as public health. Climate services of the time mainly consist of supplying expert reports and analyzing meteorological data for the Climate Archive. Weather forecasting in both East and West Germany is still in its infancy and meteorology a manual science. Weather observations are coded at the weather stations according to a worldwide standardized system and are transmitted every three hours by telex to the headquarters in Offenbach and Potsdam respectively. There, the weather data are decoded, transferred manually into maps and distributed worldwide. Synoptic charts which summarize all data and expert knowledge of the physical processes and interactions in the atmosphere this is the basis on which the meteorologists rely to produce weather forecasts for the next day. Warnings for severe weather included. More is not possible yet. The weather report now also comes into people's living rooms, also by TV. The meteorologist chalks the forecast for the next day live onto a board. Then in the mid-1960s, Things happen that amount to nothing less than a revolution in meteorology. The first numerical weather prediction model is introduced, which allows to simulate the state of the atmosphere for the next day based on mathematical equations. At the same time, there are the first supercomputers capable of solving these equations within a few hours. Data measured by meteorological satellites can be transmitted as pictures and are exploited for weather forecasting. The DWD's first precipitation radar is put into operation. The meteorologists venture into offering three-day weather forecasts. The first automatic devices for temperature measurement find their way into weather stations. The forecast models are being refined. The performance of supercomputers is multiplying manifold. The radar network is being extended countrywide. International organizations such as the European Centre for Medium Range Weather Forecasts, ECMWF, or Europe's Meteorological Satellite Organization, UMETSAT, are founded. Weather forecasts now cover up to seven days ahead. Even despite the Iron Curtain, the free exchange of meteorological data between East and West runs smoothly and with ease. Everyone knows that weather doesn't stop at national borders. The DWD has been in charge of measuring radioactivity in air and precipitation already since 1955. During the Chernobyl nuclear disaster in 1986, the DWD passes its baptism of fire it is the sole body able to predict the dispersion of radioactive particles and provide up-to-date overviews of the radioactive load over Germany. When the Iron Curtain finally falls in 1989-90, DWD and MD are joined 
to form an all-German DWD with headquarters in Offenbach. In the 1990s, the pace of technological progress, which has always been the driving force behind key achievements in meteorology, is accelerating rapidly. The observations from weather stations are now arriving at hourly intervals. Air pressure, humidity, wind and other parameters are measured automatically. Weather measurements from commercial aircraft begin to be used for weather forecasting. The meteorological workstation Ninjo is put into routine operation at the DWD, allowing better and faster use of the increasing amount of information. The system includes all available meteorological data and weather forecasts. The DWD launches its first website with great response. As part of its activities in climatology, the DWD becomes host of the International Centers for Precipitation Climatology and Satellite-Based Climate Monitoring. The DWD starts to publish its Climate Atlas online, thus giving public access to long-time series of climate data. The Hans Ertel Center for Weather Research is founded to further intensify collaboration with universities in the field of research. Many projects support the use of renewable energies and the turnaround in energy policy. These basic research activities, which also include field measurement campaigns, receive national and international recognition. The collaboration with the Bundeswehr is intensified with the DWD assuming the task of providing Germany's armed forces with the required basic weather forecasts 2015 and 2016, two years in which important new directions are set. With the introduction of its ICON model system, the DWD steps into the ninth generation of global weather prediction modeling. Compared to an edge length of 381 km in 1966, the global mesh width today is no more than 13 km. Instead of formerly one atmospheric layer, the model now includes 90 layers. The forecasts for a week ahead are as good as the forecasts for one day 50 years ago. The first climate predictions are produced. Thanks to the DWD's accurate warnings, collaboration with German disaster management institutions, including fire brigades, is at its best during numerous extreme weather events. The DWD introduces its app for weather warnings, Warnwetter, and receives several awards for it. The scale of weather warnings is refined from district to municipal level. In 2017, the Deutsche Wetterdienst Act is amended as part of the Open Data Policy Large collections of data are now made available free of charge and the DWD sphere of tasks is extended considerably to include, among others, analysis and projection of climate change. The DWD's German Meteorological Computation Center, DMRZ, is an important interface for the global exchange of meteorological observation data coordinated by the WMO. Today, the measuring and observation network of the DWD is almost fully automated. Many data are made available at one-minute intervals. The DWD produces climate predictions for all time scales from three months and decades through to the end of the 21st century. The DWD advises decision-makers in politics, administration and industry on any issues related to climate change. The two research observatories of the DWD enjoy a global reputation. In Lindenberg, for instance, the physical state of the atmosphere is studied, whereas the work at horn peisenberg focuses on the chemical composition of the atmosphere. In 2019, DWD President Prof. Dr. Gerhard Adrian is elected President of the WMO, which is also a novelty, as he is the first German national in such a high-ranking honorary office at the WMO. Today, weather forecasts, severe weather warnings and climate predictions reach millions of customers within seconds, thanks to digital communication, social media and open data policy. This is how the DWD fulfills its legal mandate to warn the population of weather and climate risks at highest quality standards. 
It is with innovation and scientific expertise, and also with heart and passion, that the DWD staff will continue to devote themselves to these tasks in the future, in service of the people. Weather and climate may change, but our commitment to you remains the same. Deutscher Wetterdienst, your first port of call for weather and climate.